Do you mind ripping those eyes off the wall? Because I'm gonna get distracted. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Is it is it okay to like, get the phone rings? Is it okay to mention that there's a child being born? Sure. What's the name? Margaret. It's a weird name for a boy. Yeah, I said a name without knowing the sex. So, you know, I guess I'll see if it works. <laughs> boy named Sue. Um, oh, is that is that the music? Sure is. is. That that's that's the music playing us in. Welcome. Uh, to the Video Reformation Podcast. I am Ben Oliver. I'm Justin Plant, and we have a guest with us today. We do have a special guest with us, with us today. This is uh, Bricky, Bricky Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, Bricky is joining us um, maybe forever. This is the brick that someone threw. Uh, one of the bricks. One of the bricks that someone threw through our glass door mm-hmm. uh, over the weekend to break into our office. So far, we have found that they stole... Uh, Fake bottle of Trace Comas tequila. Yep. I mean, it's a real bottle, but it had fake tequila in it. Yeah. Um, Doors that go like this. Not this. Yeah. Um, a bottle of mead. Mm-hmm. Um, Unopened. 20, yeah, still sealed. $20 pair of computer speakers and took a client's hard drive out of the box, the box <laughs> and the left the box. The hard drive's still there. Oh, the hard drive's still there. I thought they took the hard drive. So they, they just it opened it up. To, uh, ew, Toshiba. And then put it back? Yeah. Um, and then they all our next door neighbor found bloody pants, uh, Mardi Gras beads, and it appears that some frozen meatballs had been eaten <laughs> with some ketchup packets. So, uh, But the main, the main point here is don't fuck with us. We lock our shit up. Yeah. They didn't get any of our equipment. So. Do not fuck with us. Yeah, just try it again. <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome, Bricky Martin. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, so anyway, we are the co-founders of Storyboard Media, even Bricky. <laughs> He's an honorary co-founder yeah. now. Um, your guys practicing effective video for business. We are like the splinter to your Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo on your quest to defeat Shredder. Before we jump into our topic today, video selling best practices, Mm -hmm. at least that's what we're intending at the beginning here, Uh, a little housekeeping first, as always, uh, keep the topics coming, Um, uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about how this episode is different than episode five, which is also video selling, Um, but uh, we've gotten some decent suggestions and uh, we just keep losing that list, so uh, keep them coming (laughs) and we'll get to to some of these ideas um, pretty soon. Um, let's see. We also have a new sponsor this episode. Is that right? That's right. Unpop. Unpop. Yep. They finally came through. So. Okay. Good. Yep. Um, well, welcome to Unpop. We'll uh, look forward to hearing that. Hope that full More spot new, later in the episode. N- new stuff. Oh yeah. Check these uh, out. It's fancy mugs. Yeah. Collector's Video information items. on one side. Storyboard media logo on the other. You can have can, one can of they... these for three payments of nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Or and if any you, project over fifty grand. You know what? I'm feeling crazy. Any project over thirty grand. All right. They can get a mug. It's fair. Yeah. yeah. All right. Get your uh, video reformation mugs today. Um, let's see. So unpop. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to that. So topic of the day: topic video selling. Du jour is what it says. I know. I know. But I decided not to. Uh, French audience. Not to. Yeah, we record the French version of the episode later. So I was just, okay. since I'm fluent, it just kind of Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. It's hard yeah. to remember which language you're in sometimes. Right. Yes. So on to topic du jour, video selling best practices. Um, like I mentioned, we did do... You may have heard some of these How to use video concepts. selling in the B2B sales process Great was title. episode five. Mm-hmm. I think that was before we had figured out titles. Yeah, we're still working on it. <laughs> We're still working on topics. But, of course, back in episode five, that was before a bat ate a Chinese person. <laughs> or a Chinese person ate a bat. I don't know which one it was. But but then all of us got coronavirus and died. So it's probably worth um, kind of... Uh, you are a, spunky today. I, it's, <laughs> I got a lot here? of nervous energy <laughs> um, today. So um, I also feel like we haven't done one of these in like three weeks. It's been about three weeks. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so given our new normal of coronavirus, I think we'll try to remind ourselves to, to... 
I, I think it applies more. It does. Right, because because the, the person-to-person sales meetings are gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything's happening over either a Zoom call or asynchronous one-to-one video or, Phone. or those kinds of things. Phone. So, you know, this is the perfect time to fully integrate yeah. video into Not to mention, like, so products. much... Uh, like so much humanity has been lost, you know, like the, the connections to people and ability to interact with people. So I think it's, it's also just a, like a pleasant thing to see somebody's face. A lot of us get kind of tired of those video calls. I think that's yeah. no, uh, revelation, but, um, but the video sales thing is, is a kind of a different game. It's, um, well, I guess we'll get into it, but, well, but I, you know, I, th- I think there's, there's a point to be made about the video calls and the connection too, because, uh, I mean, it took me like three weeks to just reach full video chat exhaustion uh, when we went remote. Mm-hmm. There's still just kind of a, a level of emotionally and, and mentally exhausting that you wouldn't have sitting in a conference room with someone. But after doing a whole bunch of recent interviews, um, the interviews, there were only two people. Did you get the job? Um, I did. <laughs> I gave the job. I didn't get the job. That's right. We have a new team member. We do yeah, have a new team member. Besides Bricky Martin. <laughs> yes. Yes. Lots of growth and expansion uh, during <laughs> coronavirus times here. Um, no, we will uh, We will bring Jacqueline onto the podcast sometime in the near oh, future. Oh, yeah. Let's freak her out. Yeah. I think yeah. maybe day one or maybe day two, I guess, if we do it that Tuesday. Um, but I, so in, in all of those interviews that I did, I sent out a Google Meet link through Calendly which gives you the option of phone or a video chat. Every single person that I talked to, except for two, chose video chat Mm -hmm. instead of phone. And despite hearing a lot of the things that I expected to hear from both of the people who didn't connect on video chat, I left those interviews feeling less of a connection to them Mm -hmm. than I had with other people. I suspect those two people are the kinds of people who wear the watch face on the inside of their wrist. Oh, yeah. You know, it's kind of the feeling I get. It's like, fuck you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What? Who does that? Um, It's not 612, is it? (laughs) Um, Okay, so, um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit. I think maybe let's put, let's go all the way back and put kind of video for sales or video selling in some context. Okay. So for the uninitiated, how is, I mean, you know, for lack of a better question, what is video for sales? I mean, what are we talking about when, when we talk about video for sales? How is it different than video for marketing or mm-hmm. just video? Yeah. Um, video can be used all over the place throughout business. Um, I think our focus is, out, is typically those revenue centers like marketing, sales, customer success. So we'll probably kind of, you may hear us kind of jot a couple things down for each of those, but video marketing is often a, a one-to-many type of video. So you make this one video that goes out to hundreds, thousands, millions of people. Mm -hmm. I think TV commercials are like a a marketing video. Um, that's, that's not as common today, I think as, um, uh, like, like it used to be. Um, I think people are doing, you know, a lot more smaller budgets given the ephemeral nature of content these days. Ephemeral. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I think video and sales, may borrow some of that, but it's some of that same content from marketing, but it's used on a one-to-one or one-to-few um, scenario. So it's it's to enable the that buying committee, whoever is involved in that, mm-hmm. in that buying process um, on the client side, uh, giving them an opportunity to see you, see your product, get to know your company, those kinds of right. things. I, I think too there's, you know, each of those revenue teams, marketing, sales, customer success, have certain customer journeys, mm-hmm. right? I, I, and, and I think marketing and sales are very connected to each other. Sales and customer success should be very connected yeah. to each other. But how, ma- how many times have we heard? Line. I know, but how many times have we heard from the support department or the customer success department, like, it's really hard to deliver what our salespeople have promised. Mm-hmm. Like the the yeah. salesperson is all about. I mean, the good salespeople are about finding the right solution for for their client. But there could be a lot of right solutions, and so if they're overselling all of these, you know, add-ons or, like or, or just promising timelines yeah. and, and 
functionality and future functionality and all those kinds of things to get someone to sign the contract. And then customer you know, success has to actually deliver on that mm -hmm. when those may be unreasonable. I, I, I think you hear a ton of talk about marketing and sales alignment and you just hear a lot less about sales and customer success alignment. Yeah. There's an episode for us. That's really interesting. Got that? Okay. Somehow we'll work video into that. Yeah. Um, you know, marketing, I mean, you're taking someone ultimately from like unaware of your brand mm -hmm. to interested enough to talk to somebody who might sell them a solution mm -hmm. or, or provide them with a solution. Mm -hmm. And, and so a lot of, you know, every company draws a line at a slightly different place in that process. But, you know, marketing's job is to get an MQL or an SQL, basically, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so they're creating content to take, I mean, it really is the funnel, to take all of these potential people and, you know, whittle them down to the people who are like, I could use this. And then sales job is to take over at that point mm -hmm. and get them from, hey, this might work for me to, oh, I'm so excited that this is going to work for me. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think you have to approach, not only do you have marketing responsible for just like personas mm -hmm. as opposed to individuals, mm -hmm. salespeople are starting with individuals yeah because it is that person who has selected. So by its nature, even if you're creating content that may be one to a few, it, it's still because there are very certain types of people that you end up talking to as a salesperson, and it might be something that scales. Yeah. Otherwise, you're working with individuals, even if you're working with a consensus, you're working with one person who's trying to find a solution for their business. And, and that's just a different mindset than, than yeah. marketing has. And in, in sales, like you're, like you're saying, you're, you're not sending this out to many, you're, send, you're, you're communicating with a specific person, right? The, the seller and the buyer. And, <clears throat> Sales is so you have to develop a relationship and you have to maintain that relationship yeah. moving into customer success and, and whatnot. But just like you were saying with the interviews you did, the two that were just by phone, you didn't develop that relationship as much yep. as you had hoped or as they had hoped. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I was I was fine with being able to cross a couple people yeah. off the list. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's one of the major draws to video in sales is that it helps develop that relationship instantly. Yeah. And for anybody who, I mean, to put kind of the coronavirus spin on it, for anybody who, who said video is no replacement for an in-person conversation, uh, I mean, you just apply that fact to it, right? Like there cannot be in-person conversations anymore. Mm -hmm. So video is going to be a whole lot better than a phone call. Mm -hmm. So if you can't meet them in person, that kind of takes away a big argument mm -hmm. for for using video. And and again, I think we talk about this, I don't know how much we talk about it on the podcast, but we talk about it a lot with our clients and prospects, is that you know video doesn't have to be, and video isn't the only answer, right? It doesn't live in a bubble, an individual video or a campaign. Like it, it works with everything else that you're doing and everything else that you have. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to give up on you know, phone prospecting, cold prospecting, yeah. or, you know, having phone conversations or, you know, by using video, you're just, and I think we'll talk about this a little bit and how to implement video selling as an organization. And maybe this is a transition into that, but, but I feel like, I mean, in my six years of corporate sales and in talking to our clients over the last six plus years, I feel like sales leaders primary responsibility is to give their sales team the tools that each of those individuals need mm -hmm. to select how they want to balance those. I found in my personal sales experience that too much of the marketing collateral that was being created for salespeople, one, wasn't being made with the input of salespeople, mm -hmm. and two, was like you had to log into Salesforce how many times you use that brochure you know, in a personal meet, like you just, you had to use it. You had to give out a certain number of, okay, of so like quote, this brochure. Was part of it was part of a quota, right? It was part of the weekly reporting. And to me, I, th I think, and you know, who knows? I was only there for two years. Maybe it was just a phase in, in that company. But, but right, it's, it's really to say like, here's the library of tools that you have available. Brochures, a website, landing pages, ROI calculators, video, one-to-one -one video, a video library, like 
let the salespeople figure out which of those work best for them to utilize mm-hmm. as they develop their own personality and yeah. processes and kind of sales cadence, cadence and, and things like that, too. So I think it's important for an organization, honestly, to not mandate that their sales teams use video, mm-hmm. but train them up and give them all the resources that they can use it to its full effectiveness yeah. if they choose yep. to use it. Yep. There's a best practice. Yeah. There Maybe it is. Got one. Right there. <laughs> All right. We did it. Good. We done? Um, so there are two ways uh, we've kind of split this up in terms of best practices uh, for video in sales. And that's one for an organization. How do you use this as an organization? And then how do you use this as an individual? Um, so let's hop into that. So let's call that first one a best practice for an organization. Right. Which is just offering the, t- the tools, like fully the com- Fully commit to empowering your team to mm-hmm. use video, but don't mandate it. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, you know, and, and fully commit is, you know, put everybody through the onboarding, you know, get the full plan. Don't, you know, I mean, you can make a free plan work, but that, you know, make it so that everybody who, who's, who wants to use it, make it so that they can use it. But don't mandate it. So let's just call that best practice for an organization number yeah. one. Um, and then maybe it makes sense to hop into an individual. So these, these, these are generally reverse engineered here to uh, they, Ben pose these as questions almost. That was the plan. <laughs> um, we were going to do like a QA kind of style uh, version of a podcast. And then that didn't happen. <laughs> so we can, but it can. it can. So, Justin, mm-hmm. I've been wondering, how might or what might a best practice be <laughs> when it comes to integrating into an individual salesperson's existing sales cadence? So let's say that, that video isn't a tool for them from day one. Mm-hmm. right? So this is someone who's maybe a junior rep or, or maybe even a senior rep. Somebody who's been doing it for a little while. They've established and kind of taken ownership of their process and cadence. Mm-hmm. What are some best practices for, for somebody who's going to start in that situation who's going to start using video? Um, I think the first thing is, I mean, becoming aware of like how to use the platform. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be embarrassing if you do it <laughs> poorly. Yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, it depends what platform you're using. Some of them are easier than others. Um, personally, we use Vidyard, uh, like the Go Video tool. Um, there's Loom, there's Soapbox, others. and yeah. others. Bomb, bomb. Mm, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, getting familiar with that tool is important, and that's 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 not just how does the camera work and how does the software work, but it's also how do you interact with that tool and how like. So practice, I think, is is a really important yeah. best practice. I think a hundred videos sh- is like a good milestone. Once you've recorded a hundred videos, then maybe you're ready to <laughs> to uh, like start. I don't know. So, so yeah, to me, and and you do these day Daily. in and day out, right? So to me, a hundred like that seems daunting. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you do a hundred video? I mean, I guess it's you know like. How do you eat an elephant one piece at a time? But yeah, like, let me pull up the videos that I've just recently made. Right, uh, I've sent eleven in the past week. Okay, um, most of those are um, me introducing myself ap- after I've used. Uh, we use a, a lead gen platform that kind of brings people in, but then also some people just come in through the front door as well with um, a brick. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so either way, once some, once I make contact with somebody, like where they've actually responded and said, hello, mm-hmm. I'm interested, there's something here, um, teach me, whatever it is, um, oh my God, I've heard about you before, you're really awesome, would you please grace me with your presence, then I grace them with my presence. So I'll send a hello video to just kind of introduce myself and say, hey, I'm the founder, thanks for uh, reaching out. Um, Co-founder. Is that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> uh, but in here as well, I've got um, a couple. I've got a proposal walkthrough. I've got a couple playlists that I've built for particular um, 
for particular people that they're, if they're looking for like, hey, we, we were looking at doing some product videos. Do you have anything like that? And so I'll, I'll send my hello and then I'll add a couple of product videos just to kind of give them a taste of what, of what we do. Where, so where am I practice? How many of those, are, how many of those are, are scripted? Do you just kind of shoot from the hip and, and uh, you know, like we're not in the office together anymore. So like how many takes? Cause I remember at the beginning, you know, you, you, you'd, you'd be doing this like two minute long intro thing mm-hmm. and you'd be doing great for like a minute, 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. And then you would stumble over something and then you would kind of break character and or then Tucker just, would say something. Yes. And then you just have to go all the way back to the beginning yeah. to, to do that. I'm guessing now you're doing them in fewer takes. They're shorter. They're more concise. There's probably some kind of, at least for the intro. Ones, yeah. I'm trying to be there's some kind quick. of like generalized script that you're following, but you just know that you're going to hit these bullet points. I'm the founder. There are no other founders. Um, <laughs> right. You know, uh, thanks for reaching out. We can totally do fill in request, yeah. you know, th- yep. this and, is- and I, yeah, I'll, I'll generally get, I'll get a sense for like where their video is, the, okay. the state of video. And if it feels relevant, I'll bring it up. If it's like, Oh yes, did a lot of video five years ago, but haven't, I'm, I'd like to touch on that in our conversation. Let's set up a time to talk. Um, but that's that's my opener. I, it, do you want I, me to do a live one? Yeah. Okay. What kind of company are you? Let's let's say I'm a tire kicker. Um, hi, Justin. Thanks so much for your email. Uh, you guys do some really fun work. Can you tell me what your hourly rates are and uh, how long it, uh, the process takes? Yeah. All right. Um, your software company or something. So this, so this is yeah, yeah, I'm a software company or something. And, <laughs> but I, I think, and this is this is something I was going to bring up. I think this is one of the advantages of the asynchronous aspect mm-hmm. to one to one video. Yep. Is that is that I kind of launched into like a conversational role play, mm-hmm. right? Which is which is a sales exercise. But that's not what this is, right? So you actually have the time mm-hmm. to read the initial, and and you don't feel like there's a, like there's no silence that has to be filled. Mm-hmm. By you think like yeah. figuring out what to say while you're filling silent, you get to like think about well, how do I want to respond to this person? Um, mm-hmm. That's a good point. And I, so yeah, I, I, I think that had never really occurred to me, but it, it's an interesting analog. Is just to like you know, if you were cold call prospecting and you said whatever the initial outreach email says, mm-hmm. and they said actually yeah, I you know. Sure, let's talk. You don't have to be Jeffrey Gidmer or John Costigan or any of those yeah. like sales gurus. Like, yeah, you just can you can j- just take, take your take time, <laughs> write out a couple different responses, yeah. record a couple different responses, and, and pick which one to send. I, I think I my habit selling for introverts. <clears throat> yeah, good, yeah, good way to put it. Um, I'll look up first thing I do is look up their LinkedIn. I want to I like to see who I might be talking mm-hmm. to. Um, I look up their company on Crunchbase to see where they are in terms of like financials. Um, like if they just hit a hundred million dollar C round, it m- might be like <laughs> a, they might be ready to buy and spend and well, and and price the customer, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you know that they just got a hundred million dollars, you might tell them, you know, a project starting rate that's different mm-hmm. than somebody who is, you know, pre-funded yeah. startup or something like that. I'll look at, and if they, <clears throat> if they have no like financial history on Crunchbase, which is just about like SEC filings and stuff like that, and they're, if they've been around for 10 years, I know they're bootstrapped and I know that they probably have a different approach to marketing or sales and, and how video might play a role. So I kind of, I can, I can make some inferences on how, and then, and then I'll go look at, um, their website, see if they're using video and what kind of platforms mm-hmm. to see what kind of investment they put into video or how they, how they approach video. Uh, and then I'll look them up on YouTube um, and see what kind of history they have there. Um, and that's kind of, that's where I gather my information. And so um, I've seen your face on LinkedIn. I know that you're a, you're a startup. Um, you've got a hit. You personally have a history of, of marketing um, for a couple different companies. You've been a director at a couple different places. So, um, so I could, you know, I, I, Engage who you are a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll reach out and say hello. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll do it here. <clears throat> Hi there. I'm here. We go. Hi there. I'm Justin. I'm one of the co-founders at Storyboard Media. I want to say thanks for reaching out. 
Um, I really love what you guys are doing at XYZ. Um, I see you guys have been doing video quite a bit over the past couple of years. I'd love to hear more about that experience. Uh, I'd like to dig in to hear more about what you're looking for and see if we're a good fit for you. So um, feel free to click the link and schedule a time or just hit me back with what works for you. And I uh, look forward to it. Thanks a lot. Pretty simple. Yeah. But it's, it's remarkably effective. Though I get notifications all the time of people watching them, but also re-watching them within their organization, mm -hmm. um, which is really exciting. So I think, I think uh, that potentially transitions us into some of those behavioral uh, triggers that you get, um, depending on the platform, right? Where mm -hmm. you can actually see somebody's watched this, mm -hmm. or you can see uh, three days later, you get that instant notification that they're likely watching your video again right now. Mm -hmm. It seems like the kind of information that you might want to capitalize on and call them mm -hmm. <laughs> right then. Mm -hmm. what, what kinds of, uh, I mean, turning it into a best practice, how, you know, how might you be able to leverage the analytics and the information, the behavioral information that you get in your platform to better strike while the iron is hot? Mm -hmm. Before, while the iron's hot, I think it's just as valuable to to know that they haven't watched it. Okay. When I know that they haven't watched it and I sent something a cut like a week ago, um, then I know it's probably a good time to follow up. Okay. And, and just see <clears throat> if they've had a chance to see it or, or make sure that it was delivered or whatever it is. Um, and see if they're still interested in, in talking. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, when the when the iron is hot, I I don't uh, call people. I, I actually prefer to talk. Like I, I I hate texting. Like I'm not like an old curmudgeon or anything. I just I think it's like to go back and forth all the time and email and texting or whatever is kind of a slack. Whatever it's annoying. Let's just pick up the phone and talk. Um, but I, I don't know. Get I, off my lawn. But I don't generally call people. Uh, immediately when I see that, I kind of I kind of wait it out to see what kind of happens. But I'll look at what they've watched, how, if they've like if the, if it's a playlist or something to see what videos they watched, um, just to see their kind of engagement. Um, but yeah, those metrics are available depending on what platform you're you're working with. I think I think in in um, especially in the the B two B tech space. Um, which has become one of those uh, meaningless words, tech space, um, or terms. Uh, a lot of the sales are high pressure sales, not not like high pressure to buy something, but high pressure sales quotas and, mm -hmm. and closing. And there's a lot of pressure on the salespeople too, uh, especially uh, in light of the economic downturn and things like that. I mean, every opportunity is so valuable, and so and so while while reacting to somebody in the moment, I mean, virtually instantaneously, um, may not be something that we need for our sales process. It's true. There's probably a lot of value to, to just having that information mm -hmm. and, and kind of, and there's so many integrations into HubSpot and Salesforce and, and all those kinds of things that you can, you can, you can trigger sequences based on certain behaviors and notifications. Mm -hmm. So you may not even have to actively do things. You could have a sequence, an email sequence that's triggered by a view of mm -hmm. this video. Yeah, if it's integrated into your marketing automation yeah. or and, and, CRM. And so, and so maybe you don't even have to actively like drop what you're doing because you got that, you know, top right of your Chrome browser notification that so-and-so mm -hmm. viewed your video and like call them immediately. But, you know, having that information in real time. But in terms of best practice, I think that that's a pretty evident one is connect this platform, if you can, connect this, these video metrics to your CRM, to yeah. your marketing automation, so that you can, I mean, <clears throat> one of the, that, that feeds information to all that data about your customer, or mm -hmm. your, your, your buyer. And the more you know about the buyer and their, and their engagement with your sales process, the better off you're gonna be able to serve them um, and so you can, with those, with that data in your CRM, you are able to, um, what's that called? Score? Lead score? Yeah. 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 Um, which is a really fun little activity. Yeah. 
That was one of my favorite parts about 23. 23 had a really it fun It just watch. had like Little five or six parameters and you just something. kind of said yeah. how important they were. So if that's a, an individual salesperson's best practice is, is integrate it with the other tools and, and at the very least pay attention to those behavioral notifications. Mm-hmm. To kind of pivot that to the organization side, what opportunities are there to, as a sales manager, as a sales leader, to to kind of track your team's usage? And uh, I think you could probably even go so far as to, you know, attributing revenue or closed deals to video. But like, what kinds of tools are there for a sales leader to to track how their team is is utilizing it? You may remember some of our clients that we've actually helped bring on to Vidyard, uh, the platform we're still admins. Yeah. <laughs> and so like that was, we, we became admins so that we could track the progress of their sales team and, and understand how they're using it and make certain suggestions. Um, so we were acting almost like sales managers by proxy of, of just the video side of things. Um, but yeah, your, your sales managers can, uh, can be set up on here as an admin to be able to view all those accounts, see what kind of activity is happening in terms of video generation, video usage, and video engagement. And um, it's just a, another way to to gauge how your reps are are dealing with your customers, and maybe even figuring out how are your buyers reacting to this new marketplace of coronavirus. Mm-hmm. How would you, as a, sticking with sales leaders, how would you roll out a tool like Go Video to your sales team? Let's say you got twenty five <clears throat> salespeople mm-hmm. on your team. How would you, how would you recommend that they roll that out? I would say start small. Five. That I mean, depends on how big your team is, but let's say you have twenty-five, 25 sales. Twenty-five people. Oh, you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Want uh, to play that back? So, like, maybe like twenty-five-ish. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I would probably, I would offer it up and say, who wants to to engage with video in the sales cadence? Because I think that's a big part of it. Is is people have to want to do it. Uh, forcing any sales tools on salespeople doesn't generally <laughs> work that well. Yeah. Adoption can be slow. It depends on what your what your sales team is made of. Um, People. But, <laughs> yeah. So I would start there. Like, who who wants to do that? And then and then you know if they're if we're talking like one SDR and then one account exec and uh, one sales manager, <clears throat> like if it's spread out like that. That can be that can be difficult to to roll out. Um, <clears throat> the other way to do it is that, like if everybody's interested, I would start with uh, a team. I think I think video is really effective through all the different parts of the sales process. Um, I've outlined a couple here that I'll just rattle off quick: prospecting, follow-ups, introduction to team members, proposal reviews, um, contract reviews, and handoffs. Um, but uh, so, handoffs, handoffs to onboarding. Yeah, that kind of thing. That kind of goes along with team intros. Um, mm-hmm. So you can see that it, it's it goes throughout the entire buyer cycle. Um, but I think it's it's you get more bang for your buck by using it earlier in the sales process. You engage more people faster by using video. So I would I would encourage uh, our clients to, if if everybody in the sales team wants to use video, I would encourage them to use it in that BDR, that outgoing, um, and just like kind of S like the SQL Mm -hmm. area, like not where they're like almost ready to buy. Um, eventually I would, I would want the entire team to roll out, but I think it's important to, to kind of test some things and see what works, build some best practices within your own organization and, um, and then teach. I think, uh, what's interesting with some of our clients who have, who've brought this on, um, not all of them. Some of them have not been able to adopt it very well, and yeah. I don't. And that may be partially our fault. Uh, maybe just the the situation they were in with whatever. Um, when they start seeing results, people want results. Like other yeah. people who aren't getting those results want those results. That's that's the biggest thing thing for me. And and we do um, shameless plug time. I don't think we do enough of this in our video selling starter package, the Glen Gary. Um, you know, helping sales managers, sales leaders figure out how to roll it out to their team um, is a part of what we do. And and I've 
especially in growing sales teams, you know, where they're hiring like a new salesperson per week because they did just get that hundred million dollar funding or whatever. I'm fascinated by the opportunity of bringing in like, you know, have a start date and all of your new sales reps that you bring on like for the next two months or like from that point, give them video so that they've got it from day one. Mm. But then I think that's the key is as a sales leader, you have to track the efficacy of that video so that then you can go to the your your more senior sales reps and say, okay, here's this video selling platform that we rolled out with all of the people who started since July. Mm-hmm. And look at these numbers. Who wants in? Mm-hmm. Right? And and so I think that's a way to get some of that buy-in because yes, when when platforms and different collateral is forced on a sales team or even just introduced to a sales team. So many junior and senior uh, reps are like, what I do is working. Like, I, like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't need to try anything else. Mm-hmm. But when you can share that data with from your pilot team. I think that's smart, yeah, because like you get to dictate from, if it's day one for somebody, you yeah. get to dictate how they, how they sell. Yeah, now I, we haven't actually implemented a, a client like that yet, but that's always the one in the back of my mind where it would be like, that could be a really interesting thing to test is is the reps that start with full video selling capabilities from day one Mm -hmm. um, and just see you know and and so instead of it becoming an add-on or kind of integrating with an existing cadence and existing tools it's just it's just there from the outset all right why don't we break for our sponsor let's hear what unpop has to say there you go imagine you're lying in bed after a serious, serious round of lovemaking. There's a fresh cigarette hanging in your mouth, the flick of a lighter. Inhale. And every little thing seems to be right in the world, even for a moment. And then that moment is gone. You notice your popcorn ceiling. It's not as much about the asbestos as it is bearing that burden of that unsightly aesthetic. Unpop takes care of that for you. Unpop helps remove that unsightly popcorn ceiling in a flash with an easy to administer eye drop solution. Simply apply 34 drops to each eye every morning, and within seconds, you'll trip balls. Soon enough, you'll forget all about those unsightly ceilings and start to wonder why purple is actually not a color, or why your teeth are little people inside your mouth, or even why your granddaddy willed you buckets of blood when he died. Unpop will completely and entirely distract you from the unsightly popcorn ceilings and help you focus on what really matters. Unpop, just 68 drops until you stop worrying about your ceilings. That may be your best one yet. (laughs) Um, When I first tried it. um, You're on it right now. Yeah. Which may may explain the nervous energy you were talking about. Yes. When when I first tried it, I was concerned because I don't have popcorn ceilings. I have these really nice exposed beans yeah. right in the cigarette old cigarette warehouse. Um, but what I found was that those beans are like the little people in my teeth, and they have ar- arms which have hands connected to them, which like slowly move closer and closer to your eyes. Um, to the point where you basically just pass out from fear <laughs> and have no idea whether you have popcorn ceilings or exposed right. beams or whatever. It works without whatever. popcorn ceilings too. I imagine with popcorn ceilings, and 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 maybe you can answer this. It, it's kind of like a stalactites, you know, just just like yes. like coming down yep. towards you. Yeah, yeah. Um, shit's good. First one's free. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, then you got to pay for them. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. I, you know, at the beginning of, uh, you know, when they first pitched us, um, they were reading a, uh, they made some tweaks, but they were reading us kind of a similar uh, mm-hmm. copy for, for what they were thinking the, the spot would be. And I didn't know anything about the product. I hadn't tried it yet. And I, I just thought, like, using an eyedropper to fix popcorn ceilings, like, you have to turn the room upside down. Because. If you use, I should stop using Unpop. <laughs> See, I thought, I thought, you know, when they when they first came to us, I was like, isn't that just LSD? And it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, for we, your we, eyes, we were right. <laughs> yeah. 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 
what's the did they ever tell you um when they were giving you any notes on how to deliver the spot did they ever uh, indicate to you why 34 drops in each eye what happens if you do 33 or 35 uh let's find out okay I do not know well welcome to our new sponsor unpop it's lsd for your eyes <laughs> Okay, uh, where do, would we like to go next? Um, let's go back to an individual okay. salesperson best practice. Oh, you know, I do have a question um, that I wanted to ask earlier. How important are googly eyes on hmm. your webcam? Yeah. Um, I think googly eyes in general oh. are pretty important. Googly eyes. <laughs> I'm glad you rattled it because then at least people just listening could could understand we have uh, a variety pack. This is the sound of googly eyes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, it, it is one of those things that is um, surprisingly effective. It it definitely. I mean, we're not kidding. Like, we're not bullshitting here. Yeah, like, yeah. So, so we put we put googly eyes on Cam. Cam is a, a webcam that we use because s- still Macs have shitty, shitty webcams. Yeah. So we just bought one for like a hundred bucks, and it looks way better. But um, good luck finding one now. But, but. In, in most of these platforms, while you're recording, it'll show you. So you can either show. You can either show just you, you can show your screen, or you can show your screen and you. Mm-hmm. Um, at least on, on Go Video. <clears throat> um, actually, if you really want a hot tip, yes. mm-hmm, it's yes. a really fun platform. M-M-H-M-M. Mm-hmm. Look it up. It's in beta. Um, some really cool stuff coming out with, with video. Uh, it's presentations, but you can record. It's basically, what is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It goes in between. It's a. It's. It's not quite a plug-in. Um, it's like a fake camera. Um, it presents itself to yeah. to to Zoom or Google Meet or or Go Video, whatever, as a selectable camera, basically. So you could select like the Logitech webcam that you have plugged in, your your built-in FaceTime webcam, or your mm-hmm cam. But it uses, and then in mm-hmm, you can select which physical camera you're using, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and then it will it it allows you to basically like you know chroma key without chroma key yourself. You can move yourself, you can scale yourself, you can change your transparency, you can put together nice looking slide decks. There's a co-pilot feature that's now available um, where someone uh, two people can present. You can you can share. Control of a presentation from different locations. You can both be on the screen, kind of. So, and and that honestly, I think, is a function of the times. I'm sure it was an idea in somebody's head prior to COVID, but I mean, everybody going, you know, on Zoom meetings kind of necessitates something like this, and so they've been able to really ramp up Mm -hmm. uh, this year. And 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 again, I I think it's one of those things that's just. so many in person, so many in person meetings and and local client re- vendor relationships and things like that are just going to be a thing of the past because we've all gotten so used to communicating like that. And communication through video, either real time or asynchronous, is only going to get better, mm-hmm. right? I mean, with things like hmm, hmm, um, you know, it's it's just going to be more attractive. It's going to be, I mean, all all the things that that we hate about it they're gonna find fixes for and there's probably a cottage industry popping up Mm -hmm. of all kinds of mm -hmm, uh products and and similar type things like okay (laughs) and mm. (laughs) And, mm -mm. (laughs) um back to googly eyes yeah um (laughs) yeah let's get back to something important So, but in all seriousness, it can be distracting. Eyes. It can be yes. distracting to it, you'll you'll want to watch yourself, and I think it's really important to actually look at the camera mm-hmm. and and speak to the camera so that it, it appears as if you're talking directly to that person. Right. Well, and and it's like we tell it's like we tell talent on camera, 
who's being a host if they're looking at the camera i mean the lens is is the eyes of the audience and so when you're doing a one-to-one video it's much more effective to make a connection with however small that camera lens is it's much more effective than even just looking down below at your screen and looking at yourself or looking at your script or your notes or your presentation or whatever it's that three inch difference between looking at your screen and looking at your camera i see it a lot honestly on um on the news now so many commentators are are just you know they've sent them like a webcam and a Mm -hmm. ring light Yep. Uh, instead of setting them into a TV studio. And you can tell the ones who do it day in and day out because they are looking at the camera, even though they've got everybody else who's on screen that they're monitoring. Yep. And then you can tell the people who aren't spending as much time on TV as a commentator because they're looking at the screen you know, and they're not making that connection. So you've got a panel of four people and three of them are making eye to contact with you and you know, one of them is like this. And even if you're not using... Like asynchronous video like this, uh, even just for web conferencing, I think it's important to to make to do that connection. Like kind of what you're saying. So the googly eyes in the beginning, the googly eyes were really helpful in keeping for me keeping keeping my focus on the camera and the lens. Um, Now I don't even I forgot that they're even there. Um, I'm just so used to staring straight into that little black hole. Yeah, Um, I got to credit MythBusters with the googly eyes idea, though. I watched that show religiously and, and, you know, eighth or ninth season, something like that. They had a behind the scenes enough shot where you could see the primary camera handheld that, that either Adam or Jamie were kind of talking into in one of the kind of on the fly interviews. And I saw two huge googly eyes on either side of the mat box and I rewound it and paused it. I was like, what the heck? Oh, so they know, like, you know, so if the producer, I mean, if the producer's standing right over the camera person's shoulder asking them a question, like, that's, that's eye line. That can be distracting for somebody you want to answer them. So putting the googly eyes on there, it was like, that makes, that's like so brilliant. And so maybe it's something that is just widely used in TV, um, something like that. But uh, I mean, that's where. That's why they were invented. uh, Yeah. Yeah. That and Cookie Monster. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Um, we've been talking kind of by default about asynchronous one-to-one video. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's, there's without, without diving into the marketing realm of it, where it's the one to multitudes, I think there's something about video that, that scales for selling, um, whether it be like when you talked about your, your kind of initial response, it's not so much a script and mm-hmm. it is personalized every time. But you've kind of got your bullet, like you know what research you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know uh, basically what you're going to say. But I imagine there are videos that, that you could make at varying levels of production that are either just vague enough that it seems personal or it doesn't have to be personal and a one-to-one kind of thing, yeah. but is is kind of in a video library that you can pick and choose from, like, like a micro demo of a particular feature set or, or something mm-hmm. like that. So I imagine the best practice here is to use a mix. How might a salesperson or a sales team go about creating that mix of the kind of instant one-to-one asynchronous stuff versus the pre-produced scalable stuff? And I think there's also an element of of those scalable things that, you know, that one can work for you while you sleep and two never go off script mm-hmm. because it's been made once. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you answered your question. <laughs> no. Um, so I, I use a mix. Um, I just pictured Anthony editing this down to just me asking questions. <laughs> and it's and like taking yourself. a word from here. And, and, like, and so it's just like, how googly eyes are better. <laughs> Camera? <laughs> um. And then you're talking for five minutes. Yeah, I use a mix. Uh, honestly, a lot of the so so I have the ability to make a video on the spot, and I also have the ability to access a library of video content that has already been created. Um, and so, I've found that some things after saying them the say, like three or four times, I'm like, oh, I'll just create this uh, as a specific. Um, like a scalable video. So it's still sent one-to-one, but it's something that I use 
a lot. And that might be um, a quick little dis or not discussion um, presentation, I guess, about what our, our the springboard process is like, or um, the different members of our team. Um, like you, when, I, when I at some point in the sales process, usually around the proposal, um, I'll I'll try to warm that conversation up a little bit more by showing the team members. And so Ben uh, and David will will come on and say, hey, uh, it's great to, to meet you. Justin's told us a lot about you. Um, just want to let you know who I am, what I do, and blah, blah, blah. And so it's just to make things a little bit warmer and more familiar. Um, but it's something that, like, that script is the same every time. So you may as well record it once. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the only difference might be a name. Right. Um, but uh, that can be bypassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can be. Well, and and that's and that's exactly what I meant uh, earlier about um, vague enough that it seems personalized. Mm -hmm. Because I, and I think I, I think it's worth addressing too that that video in sales is still kind of novel. I mean, there yeah. there there's a there's a pattern interruption to receiving uh, you know an animated yeah. thumbnail of, of of a person you know waving. Um, uh, you're going to just click play. And so at some point that will be less novel. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it will be any less valuable because of all the things we've already discussed. Um, but, but it is worth mentioning that because it's still kind of new. In fact, uh, the first time we sent out a sequence of sales emails with videos included in each one, the test emails that we sent, a couple of the people that we sent them to didn't even know that that was a video, even though it had a play button on it. And so mm -hmm. they didn't even know mm -hmm. to like push it. And, and so that may be another best practice as you're ramping up with this as a salesperson is, you know, putting that text in the email that says, as I mentioned in the video above, mm -hmm. or, you know, you, you kind of an introductory sentence. And then, you know, uh, I go into more detail in the video below, <clears throat> you know, something like that, just to kind of prompt that. I mean, yeah, I was so surprised that but you know we work in video it's pretty good day, best so practice there uh it's actually yeah. like include some context in your email yeah uh, most of the time we're talking about this video being sent through email i guess uh from a sales role uh so yeah making sure that it's not you don't just slap a video into an email and send it i mm -hmm. think it's important to put something a little on the top a little on the bottom usually i'll put i'll put uh, a little intro sentence um and then at the bottom, I, I want to reiterate my call to action in case they don't have time to watch it or whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's 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 that okay. He said something in this, but he he wants to schedule a time. So right now, I can get a time scheduled. Or yeah, do you um, do you use a video email signature? I don't. I don't either. And and I've I've I like them. I've heard it recommended a lot. I haven't seen it a whole lot. I really like the idea of them, but I've, I've never, it's just not something I've tried, mm -hmm. but I, I to, especially in a sales environment, I can really see the advantage of that, especially so many salespeople are, are extroverted and so many buyers, you know, I think 54% of buyers on average are, are actually introverted. And so, you know, there's salespeople who want to jump on a call and put themselves on camera and engage you and like like they feed off not mm -hmm. just for their job but like they feed off social interaction yeah. um but if if over half of our potential buyers are people who who you know maybe not shy away from that kind of thing but prefer you know to have more control in that mm -hmm. i totally see how how having either that one-to-one -one asynchronous customized video that's addressed to them or kind of that that made once video email signature where if I get this cold email one in a sequence, at least I can click on it and, and see that there is a human behind this email. Mm -hmm. I know it's yeah. in a sequence. I know it's automated. I know somebody bought my, my name and email off of a list mm -hmm. somewhere. But to see that there was an actual person who I would be responding to, I think is probably there's got to be some data on on response like cold email response rates. With I mean, even video. people just putting a picture of themselves yeah. in their signature is is a step in that direction. But video makes yeah. it so much more real. Yeah. So share one more best practice with me 
Um, and I think maybe the way, the way to go here is so much of the, the typical B2B buying process is a consensus sale. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got that initial person, right? So we've talked about the person who responds to that cold outbound email or, or whatever. Like that person is kind of your, your primary passenger up until a certain point. And then all of a sudden, other people have to get involved. Mm-hmm. How does video help navigate that scenario and kind of scale and share information with multiple people? Mm-hmm. How, how does that, uh, you can speak to it better than I can. Some of that is behind closed doors and I don't know all the answers. What I do know is that if a, if a email or a document is forwarded to the other com- the part of the buying committee, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone's opened it, looked at it, downloaded it, read the whole thing, reread certain parts, sent it to legal, whatever. I do know that if Emily watched my video, it'll tell me Emily watched my video. If she shares that within her organization, it will say it has other anonymous views. Mm -hmm. And I can start to see, you know, are things picking up? Are they slowing down? Um, I can see generally like what they care about in that like if they're if they're watching the middle part of my proposal review that means we're probably on option two and that's the one that they're keying <laughs> in on yeah and so if i've seen that that's been viewed a couple of times i might pick up the phone and say hey did you have any questions about you know some of these options um I, i'm pretty candid i'll say like you know i noticed you were watching this video yeah. a couple of times did you get a chance to share that with some folks in, internally and it just opens up a discussion and it makes it very like open and, and candid where they don't feel like they have to hide anything anymore. Yeah, because we can see everything anyway. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and and I imagine there's a I, yes, I think you're right. So often it's it's you don't know who all of the stakeholders are, but sometimes I think you get kind of introduced to the buying committee, and at that point you could send out one email to multiple people, right? And then you you'd be able to to track. Or if you sent an email to Emily and an email to Jennifer and an email to Steve and an email to Shoshana, mm-hmm. you'd be able to track each of them individually yeah. um, if you knew them. So if yeah. it is the kind of thing where, where your, your passenger customer kind of introduces you to everyone else, you could structure that so you could follow their sure. individual. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, too, there, there's a, uh, I mean, just a, a client experience that we've had um, where the pri- the mid-level person who is kind of leading this whole um, vendor selection process, for lack of a better term, um, you know, when they were getting the demo, said, oh, you know, my CFO would love this part, right? As a salesperson, note that. Because mm-hmm. if you've got, you know, a separate video for that part, or if you just want to, you know, if you've got a pre-recorded demo, if you're recording that demo, yeah, like, you can take that part and send it to the CFO, yep. um, and and so I think that's just another behavioral kind of thing where where you can pay attention, you can actively listen to the the individual that you're talking to, and understand how to sell the other people who are involved. Yeah, and and, and I think the good salespeople are always asking those things, like you know what is what is your boss really going to connect with on this? What's going to you know what's the one thing that you want to share with them the most mm-hmm. out of this? And then you get to leverage that information to then, you know, target that person mm-hmm. and make sure that they're good. Because I, that's, to me, that's what happens with those buying committees and, and why they're such a mess is because everybody has these own yeah, the, personal value props that they need mm-hmm. that don't necessarily all align. And so you got to just kind of pick the one thing that's going to make them ultimately feel like they're mitigating enough risk to say, yes, this is the deal mm-hmm. we want to do. Um but that's a great way to kind of, you know, be a good salesperson and actively listen, but then utilize video as a tool to share just that content with that next individual. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and you kind of empower your advocate to, to then go to their bosses, right? And say, hey, I've gotten the demo of this thing. There's a ton of stuff that I like about this, but, you know, you're really going to love the fact that it is... 30% cheaper than yeah. this other thing that I'm looking at, or, right? They can, you kind of give them, they, you help them sell for you internally. Yeah. If you give them those tools. Give them the tools. tools, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 
Ultimately, right. I mean, this does take more effort than probably what you're used to if, if you're new to this sort of thing. It took, uh, I'm very used to video, right? Do it for a living. <laughs> um, it took some getting used to and learning how and when to do these things, figuring out what works for me because mm-hmm. this can be different for each person. Um, I think being yourself is really important because it, it, you will see if it, if you're being, uh, inauthentic, mm-hmm. um, you know, I wear, I'll wear t-shirts on a cold call. Yeah. Uh, um, I just, you know, I don't care. Uh, not that I don't care. It's that that's who I am. That's what I wear. I'm not trying right. to put myself out there as something that I'm not. And I'm very comfortable with it. And that's, that's what makes it, uh, I think it makes at least my particular sales, uh, not process, but style approach. approach. Um, just makes it unique for me. Um, I forgot where I was going with that, but it does take effort. You're going to, but it ultimately it is a more effective tool. Very yeah. certain about that. Well, and I think the advantage is, I mean, off the top of my head, you know, implementing video into sales to me feels like it, it helps you scale your outreach Right, because again, you can you can produce these personal feel things that you can set up in a sequence and send out, you know, more than you could do yourself. Um, I think ultimately it helps time to close. So even if it's more work, it gives you more opportunities to sell more over the you know a given period, a quarter, a month, a year, whatever. And again, I, th- I think that that combination of like the novel approach of a video and, and people just kind of being impressed that you're able to communicate so much so effectively, even if they're not actively thinking about it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead of having emails that go back and forth, conversation after conversation, demo after demo after demo, if you can give them that stuff to kind of, you know, self guide through a lot of that content, that and the, oh, I'm, I got a video email from mm-hmm. a salesperson. That's Right. Novel. That's that connection. Connect. Yeah. You know, it's novel, but that's also that connection that they may not be getting with another sales rep mm-hmm. if they're just doing phone meetings all mm-hmm. the time, which they're doing fewer and fewer phone meetings. They're doing more and more Zoom calls. So, I mean, you almost have to be putting your face and your voice out there more yeah. as a salesperson because everybody else is doing it a whole lot more. Why don't we hear from our sponsor again? Why not? Unpop. Imagine. Lying in bed after a serious, serious round of lovemaking. A fresh cigarette hanging in your mouth, the flick of your lighter, inhale. And every little thing seems to be right in the world, even for a moment. And then that moment is gone. You notice your popcorn ceiling. It's not so much about the asbestos as it is bearing that burden of an unsightly aesthetic. Unpop takes care of that for you. Unpop. helps remove that unsightly popcorn ceiling in a flash with an easy to administer eye drop solution. Simply apply 34 drops to each eye every morning. And within seconds, you'll trip balls. Soon enough, you'll forget all about that unsightly ceiling and start to wonder why purple is actually not a color or why your teeth are little people inside your mouth or even why your granddaddy willed you buckets of blood when he died. Unpop will completely and entirely distract you from the unsightly popcorn ceilings and help you focus on what really matters. Unpop. Just 68 drops until you stop worrying about your ceilings. I feel like maybe whoever wrote this might have been inebriated or something. Yeah. A little bit. But (laughs) high-functioning alcoholic, probably. Or... Maybe that's what happens when you do 33 drops. Per start hour. writing ads. You just start writing ads <laughs> that are a little off. Um, all right. Well, welcome to Unpop, our yeah. new sponsor. Uh, we'll see if they stick around uh, for a while. Check out our next episode and see if they're back. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Bricky Martin for his yep. input. Yep. Uh, we're happy to have Bricky on the show. Um, he may be a recurring guess maybe a recurring guess i i do want to kind of um Memorial. make a plaque out of him yeah um i picture like a you know like a cherry wood kind of shelf with a backing and then like a 
you know, an old school like, like brass pedestal, brass like plate mm. that just you know says, you know, like Sunday's date, you know, the 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 South Bank <laughs> Storyboard Office break in. Yeah, Sweet One Hundred One. Sweet One Hundred One. They took fake tequila. Uh, the actual Trace Comas mead. tequila is pretty good. Okay. Uh, real mead, $20 computer speakers, and they opened a portable <laughs> hard drive and decided to leave it. Jeff's going to be happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love how we keep finding things that... D- yeah. Did you find the uh, Always Blue? They may have taken Always Blue. Took a ball. Either that or it was my son. <laughs> It could be. Um, took your son. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for listening to this episode of the Video Reformation Podcast. Um, next time we will talk about. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned subscribe. for that episode. Subscribe, like, right on iTunes and Stitcher and wherever you get your podcasts. I still feel like that's a contractual obligation. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks Thanks for listening. We'll uh, catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Bricky, anything to say? You've been good. I wonder where this is made. Because we used to make a lot of bricks here. Yep. We didn't. We were always a video company. Yeah. Sanford is a brick city. I still make a ton of bricks down there. Hmm. They weigh the same. <laughs>